I'm up the deep end. Watch as I fall in. All right. Scoot do. Blabbity blue. Scoot D. Oh, yeah. Hey, Adam. Hey, Rick. What, you have a new album out. It's out. It's called Read the Room. Mm-hmm. And it's out. Where can people find it? Uh, Amazon, Spotify, iTunes. Those uh, are the big three. Those, those are the three options we'll give them. I think so. Yeah, okay. you don't want to give too many options. Right. Uh, album uh, release uh, availability suggestive uh, <laughs> places are like are like selfies oh. in a certain city. <laughs> oh, right go now. ahead. Sorry, that's actually a good premise. Yeah, you don't want too many. Oh, oh, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mind getting pimped out to local activities. Boy, what a great bit, huh? <laughs> uh, I'll be honest with you. Uh, that one, I don't get it. I, I didn't know what was. I must have missed something in the beginning because yeah, I was talking over. I was trying to do a a bad, not real bit over a bit that's been polished, polished and recorded. <laughs> Well, let's try another one. Or sure. is that the one? No. This plan is a whole bunch of tracks. All right. Uh, An album is a, is a whole bunch of tracks. Could we, for uh, just to play in the editing room, yeah. could I have you uh, look to camera and uh, lip as best as you can yeah. along with that's one? A great, that's, a, that's a fun game. All right. You know what else is a fun game? Connect Four. <laughs> yeah. If, this, if, you ha- if you could have pulled one out. Oh, no way. You have it? Oh, <laughs> Holy shit. I mean, is it a Jewish thing to have Connect Four yes. ready to go? Yes. <laughs> Connect Four Monopoly that has that still has all the money in it. Yeah. Yeah, everyone loses most of the Monopoly uh, pieces. And the money, you're always playing with like, you're like, we got four 50s left. If you could have a rap battle, with a rapper of your choice, who would it be? Eminem, 100%. I, I already know what I would do. I God, would, I almost want you to do it instead of Chris. Can he tag team you in? It would be better. I love Chris and I love his impression, but you would be... It's crazy you're, you're It's just, crazy what I could do you're in the bars like I have. That, you know? Yeah. Yeah. The situations speak for themselves, no doubt. The limits of the gimmicks of the strife without. No, I'm just contemplating. Lord Jesus Christ above with my mind's eye, God's eye, playing in strife and love. Or that Chips was a- Ahoy, oh. yo, we going for gold, we going for, going for, going for gold, <laughs> connect four, connect more, Ooh. if you can get some of that s'more, cause your campfire, it's going out, gotta be lit, gotta be tit, in your face, not one but two, cause this is the place where tits were born. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, I think, yeah. uh, I think Eminem would, <laughs> would bury you. Yeah. Well, that's your opinion. Yeah. Here's how I would here's how I would approach it. I would approach it like this. I would approach it like, yo, M, you, you better than me. Yo, M. But now it's time to see. Did we just go right into a you just r- rhyme? Did, you just of course that's what I was doing. Oh, okay. You did what my mom does to me all the time. Oh, God, it intercepts you bits. Ooh, no, it's specifically the rhymes. <laughs> she also does She it. likes to rhyme a lot, huh? She's and she's great. And she always does little poems like for Passover, you know, little jokes with Elijah or whatever. And they're great and they're sweet and yeah. they're less funny and more lovely. They're less um, chubby and more bubbly. I like that. They less intense, but more. You know, sometimes you get a little. I don't know if it's an insecurity when you rap or sing, but there's something that happens to to a person's soul. Yeah. When they don't have a uh, of a shield up. Yeah. And that you really give it. Yeah. There's a game that actually uh, we would play on Undateable. Delia played this too, where you it's called serious singing. And what you do is you just sit with your group of friends yeah. and you pick a song and you legit, no goofy, you sing the best you possibly can. Now, how many people really abided by those rules and didn't try to put a little? Because as a comic, Most that's people, real tough. If you are th- through and through a comedian, it is tough to not try to eventually spin some silly on it, you know? A hundred percent. That's why it's such a great exercise. Spin some silly on it. Well- Go on. <laughs> no, see what I like to do is just give a little want, taste. I have not want more. Yeah, I give a little. I'd give a teaser, and well, then well, also Eminem's not going to expect that if you just give one line and it look like you're going to do more, and then you like, and then you just go. 
Could you take that approach outside of rap? For example, could you go like this? Yo, um, check out Adam Ray's new comedy album, Read the Room. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I want to be in the NBA. And you'll be more, more like that if you check it out. You know, just give them a little taste. <laughs> I want to be in the NBA. Yeah, just give That's a little taste. That's to make somebody want to buy that. Oh, okay. You need a little more. Yeah. So it would be like this. All right, guys, we'll check out Adam Ray's new album. It's called Read the Room. You could get it on iTunes, Spotify, and basically wherever albums are sold. Here's a little sneak peek. Yeah, I, uh, I wanted to be in the NBA when I was uh, a kid. My, my mom actually squashed that dream at nine. <laughs> okay, Adam Ray. <laughs> wait, wait, no. That's what you did with the rap. You gave a bar. Uh, yeah, okay. So I'm saying you need more than that. Yeah. So, but back to the singing game. It's a, it's a, no, no, back to who your rapper would be that you would compete with. Then back to the singing game. Because the, okay, the M &M. question about who M &M. you're... Okay, great. And I would do to him what he did to Clarence in 8 Mile. Which was? Yo, I am bad at rap. I got a little dick. I have no friends. Almost every food makes me sick. <laughs> I can't stay hard in a condom, so I take Cialis. Oops, I gave too much information. I guess I'm a dork who can't rhyme. <laughs> You know, shit like that. They'd be like, uh, okay. No rhymes anywhere. But that's round one. Just TMI. That's your rap name? That's, that's round one. Yeah, TMI <laughs> is my rap name. But you see, round two <laughs> is where he got slow play, and now he's just talking about how I can't rhyme, so he's digging himself a ditch. And then I come in like this. Yo, you burn me real bad, M. Psych. You fucking midget. Am I allowed to say that? What's the word? You're, you know, what do they like to be called? Uh, I mean, dwarfism is what it is. I feel like dwarf. Is meaner than it's midget. More fun. Oh, yeah. I feel like midget is. And again, listen. Shout out to to, to your co-host Brad, who's the a, greatest guy ever. Is but I think he's a midget. He's a little person. Midget. I know. Well, I I, I can say midget. I can say midget. My best friend thinks it's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> is that how the old timey joke goes? I have a bit. Uh, depending on what I said, if people don't respond the right way, I say I could say that, and then sometimes I don't say why, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or sometimes I'll say I could say that. My best friend, and it's something yeah. other than what it is. Yeah. If it has, like, my best friend's black, so I could say midget or, you know, whatever. I like that. Thank you, you so much. You could say that in the rap, too. Yeah. But I, well, I want to go back to the singing Maybe game Maybe even start rapping, like, just get in the, um, you know, one of the original raps that I first heard was in a Fruity Pebbles commercial. Go, oh, yeah. Loving Fruity Pebbles in a major way. The red lime, yellow, orange, purple lime, red. But to get the <laughs> fruity taste, I got a trick, Fred. <laughs> boop, 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 boop. <laughs> why'd you say the same color so many times i don't know because i couldn't remember all the too flavors many syllables. So, yeah. it was like the lemon orange lime purple lemon rum and red <laughs> to get the taste, i got a drink fred oh and then and then bonnie i remember that at the end and then hey fred <laughs> i remember that being at the end there <laughs> then the lemon rum and tan, boom, purple lemon red <laughs> what were all the flavors i forget i don't know uh, maybe was, maybe try might be try um, lemon orange flavors and then the colors it'll let you double the amount of things you know well purple and grape yeah, but you're saying you can say lemon, red, orange, red, red uh, strawberry, melon. But that's how you know the cereal wasn't good for you. They were like red as a flavor. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah. Parents couldn't pick up on that. <sighs> good stuff. <laughs> Do you ever get cereal from the dollar store? No. Oh, you don't have to be a dick about it. Oh, ask me again. Do you ever get cereal from the dollar store? Oh, you know, that's a good question. I don't think I have. That was good. Thank you. Wow. If I was casting that commercial, uh -huh. like dollar store cereal... It was like, but you're the confessionals outside the store. So have you ever had uh, uh, fruity yaz? Fruity yaz. I, no, where, where do you? Where do they're you, like Fruit Loops. They're like, yeah, I like Fruit Loops, but they're just too expensive. Well, turn around. Oh, hello, sir. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> hello. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> sir, we're shooting a commercial. <laughs> Can you get out of Oh, <laughs> yeah. Well, the, the yeah behind you, those the look dollars. great. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, oh, man, shit. I'll tell you what I would love. I'd love for you to get your animation guy to make that uh, little 20-second spot. Okay. <laughs> A thousand percent. He's making one right now of me when I interviewed Tony Danza as Tony Danza. I th have I seen you do that before? No. See no, because no, it only happened on a podcast once. I, maybe I've just I've seen you do so Tony Danza bits. For sure. And you probably played yourself and yeah. him. It was me interviewing him as him. Let me hear it. Him. Let me hear some. So I go... Um, I go, hey, Tony, do you mind if I... Uh, I mean, I can pull up the clip and play it, but... Just do it, do it. So I go, uh, I go, Tony, do you mind if I, at the end of this little podcast, it was like 45 minutes, you know, and, and uh, they actually told me I was only going to get 20, and I stretched it to 40. And, 
And uh, I was like, who's the boss now? And then they're like, all right, we seriously have to wrap it up. I was like, yeah, no problem. Um, and I go, Tony, what? Uh, I go, so so it's Tony Danza on Danza. I go, it's me, Tony Danza, interviewing me, Tony Danza. And then Tony goes, all right, this is going to be fun. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be great. And I go, <laughs> and I go, I go, uh, I go, so first question, Tony. He goes, yeah, yeah, go, go ahead. I go, what's our favorite food? He goes, our favorite food <laughs> is, you know, uh, it's a spaghetti marinara. But you know, like, and I go, oh, I love that. He goes, I know you do. And I go, he goes, he goes, I, it's, but it's not about the sauce. And I go, it's not about the sauce, right? He goes, no, it is, but it's not the just the sauce. You need the meatballs and the meat. I go, oh, yeah, yeah, the meatballs. He goes, yeah, because you take the meat and then the meat in the sauce and then it becomes a meaty sauce. I go, a meaty sauce, that's what I was going to say. And he goes, that's what I was going to say. And then he goes, that's what I'm saying. I go, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> and then it's a. Uh... Uh, do you, I know that you've, na, na, yeah, you've ended na, na. a lot of your sketches with The More You Know. So. Well, that was one of the first jokes I ever did. And it also got me kicked out of the Tempe Improv when I did a PSA joke as Tony Danza. Why would you, that kick you out? Because Adam Egget, who was uh, now books and runs the comedy store, was uh, booking the Tempe Improv, and he was so kind to get me out there to come feature. And he goes, um, we just got to be, he was going to go out with Jim Florentine, and then I broke my ankle. Remember when I broke my ankle playing basketball? I do. Yeah. And uh, I was out for six, eight weeks, and uh, so I couldn't go. So then Matt Bronger was headlining, and he goes, hey, maybe if you know Bronger, come out then. You know, get your flight out, and we'll put you up and do shows. I was like, yeah, I hadn't been on the road. And um, and I get out there. He's like, but the first few shows are these Christian, uh, big Christian uh, holiday parties. So you got to be clean. PCHPs. Yeah. So I go, no problem. Yeah, I'll just cut out the curse words. I wasn't too, you know, filthy, you know, some fart jokes, some sex joke that were silly but like i'll just take out the, the f-bombs you know yeah i was just cursing too much at that point anyway so i go up there they have me go up to do 10 and then bring up some kid for 10 they flew you out to do 10 minutes no, no i do 10 up top some kid does 10 i do another 15 and well, then I, that's that's an odd format i was featuring yeah i don't know for it was whatever okay and then i bring up bronger everything's going great doing crowd work rooms crushing whatever you know in between sets i'm talking to adam he's like no it's going great it's gonna be such a fun weekend hell yeah and then I just rolled the dice, and I had this bit where I where I did. I don't do it anymore. Where I would talk about PSAs, and I go, you know, I uh, I just want to be famous enough to get uh, to be one of those guys on a PSA. You know, those celebrities when they're always, you know, it's always like you know David Schwimmer or, or uh, you know uh, Al Pacino or or you know Johnny Depp uh, or, or Tony Danza's like, you know, I am Tony Danza. He's like, you know, um, like you know, and, and bestiality is no 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 laughing matter. You know, I got a dog. His name's uh, Trevor, and he's my best friend. But I would never fuck Trevor. You know, I would never I, fuck I, my dog. Yeah, fuck my dog. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I go, but it's never about stuff that we can relate to as people. I go, I was, I would love to see a guy up there like, what's up? My name's Chad. Surgery sucks. So that's why I tell your doctor to put please refill on your Vicodin order. That way you can sell the pills for 10 bucks a piece to all your deadbeat pill popping friends and finally get enough cash to get that 42 inch Vizio flat screen that your slutty ex girlfriend said was going to take up too much space in the apartment. Well, good thing she showed you her bipolar side because now you're free from her bullshit annex. Fuck you, Beth, you dumb cunt. <laughs> <laughs> it would always crush. Always crush. Not in this room? Yes, in this room. But they still, but I said, fuck you, Beth, you dumb cunt. <laughs> At the end of a set that was supposed to be clean, and, you got and it was. And I get off stage, and Adam goes, "Oh, dude, man, you." Fun. Oh, you closed with it, so everything else was good. Yes, I rolled the dice, and I, even I'm halfway through, and I'm getting to that part in my head where I'm like, "Don't do it, dude." But I, I wasn't comfortable enough, which you know, I didn't read the room. Available now everywhere. Adam Ray's new album. Yeah, I, uh, I wanted to be in the NBA when I was uh, <laughs> That's good. a kid of mine. My mom actually squashed that dream at nine. She's like, Adam, the NBA, but sweetheart, too. but there are no Jews in the NBA. I like the good luck with that. You dumb, dumb, happy birthday. Go to bed. <laughs> Just a power slam of honesty at nine. I ain't even at double digits. Already putting a kibosh on the fantasy, which seemed uh, fucked up from my perspective. And then I grow up and become an adult. And I'm like, oh, she was right. There are no <laughs> Jews in the NBA. Bummer, but the harsh reality of the situation. You've never turned on any NBA game and seen Kevin Durant leafing through a Torah at halftime. Uh, no sweaty yarmulkes are flopping onto the court. No commentator during any NBA game has ever been like, Rosenbaum for three! <laughs> what a shot. Weinstein at the line for two free throws. You know how he loves those. He really <laughs> take his time with this shot. He doesn't have to pay for it. Correct me if I'm wrong. It sounded like you read the room. Available now. <laughs> <laughs> On iTunes yeah. and yada yadas. Yada yadas. Um, so yeah, so, so uh, he goes, hey man, like... They're freaking out. The manager's freaking out. Like, you're going to have to go home. And I was like, what? And I, then I immediately took accountability. And I go, you're right, dude. I fucked up. I fucked up. I go, and then I'm, walk, I'm in the lobby. People come through be like, dude, that was hilarious. Great job. And the manager, it wasn't 
Adam's call. He, and this is why we're still uh, great buds. Like we went, he took me across the street to the bar after, and we chatted and hung out. Went and got food. Like I left the next morning, but um, but he was just like, dude, shit happens. You fucked up. Like no hard feelings. Like what shit happens? Mm-hmm. But it was devastating. First time being on the road, and I got kicked out of the improv, and I immediately hit up Emily at the time, who was booking the Hollywood improv, and, and just you know my connection to uh, to the improvs, and I was like. Yo, I gotta just sit down. I gotta tell you what happened because oh, <clears throat> as I'm in the lobby, Bronger's on stage, and his first three words were like, "And that cocksucker, fucking fat," you know. Said, and then I, I look up and I go, "Whoa!" to the manager, this guy Eddie at the time. I go, "Hey, uh, uh, come such on, a, such a kid, you, you know, know? Such a and, then, and then he goes, he goes, uh, he goes, he's a headliner. He can right. do what he wants." And I go, "Oh, I see what's happening now. I'm the scapegoat. If people do complain about the vulgarity of this program." You're gonna be like, we took care of it. It was the feature. We, we sent them. You know, a lot. A lot of times. So then I backed up and I go, you know what? I, I, it's on me. I can't be pissed. I made Adam look bad. I promised him I'd be clean. But I also was like, this is fucked up. What you're doing to this guy, Eddie. And then I, full circle, five years later, six years, I go back and I headline the Tempe and brought for the first time. And Eddie was still there, and he was like, Adam, no hard feelings, huh? I was like, I was just like, dude, give me I, a hug. No, I didn't. I know. I understand. I just stared you at him and was like, was yeah. I, I mean, I was cordial. I'm, I'm nice about it. I was just like, yeah, man, good to see you. That was crazy back in the day, huh? But you don't forget that shit. What were you going to say? Well, uh, I have a new thought. But when I was I w- 10, I was playing the clarinet, and this was, oh, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> uh, first is that I know that sometimes headliners don't want their features to do certain things. Yeah. And the club might have been taking the bullet for the comedian when the comedian said, I don't want anyone to do dirty stuff. There is a world where that happened. Uh, yeah. Secondly... Adam said, though, it was the owner at the time, who I think has since passed, was very religious and had these groups and was also just like, don't, like, they, it was requested by these groups. These, you know, he was also himself very Christian and very whatever, but I don't think he was clamping down on other comedians. But for these holiday parties, which were, um, you know, um, in big numbers attending, he was like, yo, you gotta. But then it was so funny because you're right. I think they were probably protecting. It was probably two people that asked for that. But maybe the people that organize the event, and yeah. and you know sometimes at clubs you come in and they're like, hey, like keep it clean. This, w-, but that's only because like something happened prior to you being there. Like I remember one time I, I hosted for Sinbad and and uh, he was like, yo man, and like you know keep it clean. I was like, yeah, I'm not real dirty anyway. He's like, no, and he he referenced some of the things of me not to say, and I was like, I've never used the N word. Like, <laughs> he think told I'm- you not to use the N word. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Really? I, yeah. Sinbad, isn't that cool? What a cool Sinbad story. <laughs> Growing I up, I can't do the full story, but like you know, growing up, one of my favorite movies. It was my dad, like a movie that I had with my dad. Um, I guess I still do, but House Guest, House Guest. How when, did I know that? Well, that's the best Sinbad movie there is. It's also one of the best movies. It's, it's a top twenty comedy of all time. Boom! I love that you said that. When he and Phil Hartman are sitting on on the bridge doing the game, where uh, I can't believe I still remember this. I think I do. Camp Maple Ridge, oh Maple Ridge. I haven't seen this movie in fifteen years. We come to you each summer, and also check out how real I'm actually going to try and sing this. Yeah, Camp Maple Ridge, Camp Maple Ridge, da 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 da. Where all our friends are, brothers. There was a time in my life. I like girls that wear Amber Crumbie. Bitch. <laughs> See, that's the joke. <laughs> That's the joke. Sing it, for real. Yeah. There's a world where I used to do stuff like this. We come to you each summer. <laughs> That's Which jokey. still sounds great, but it's... it's <laughs> but, but like actually to be in your pocket. Which is still like top 10 idol worthy. <laughs> which, which is an amazing performance. <laughs> and it shows personality the same way Eddie Murphy could win, could win you know... An, uh, what he win? Wasn't he nominated for an Academy Award for for Dreamgirls, where he's like an amazing singer? In what if he was nominated for an Academy Award for Shrek or Pluto Nash, and we just all chose to forget about that? No, I wouldn't have forgotten it. Yeah, Dreamgirls, he was. He yeah. should have won too. But you know, what? still, it still makes me fucking livid you know, that he didn't get. <laughs> I, I don't think about it all the time. You know why he didn't win? Because Norbit came out like a, a month prior, which I think is the reason he should have gotten it. Have you seen That's Norbit? That's a hot take. <laughs> Norbit is in a, is top 50 comedies of all time for me. Here is a inside and I'll go look. on record saying that, and I'll take that shit to the grave. A lot if you of want to pe- fight about it, meet me at an IHOP on Gower and Sunset. Well, you can't just stay a place. You have, to, you have to make a plan, and you have to stick to the plan. <laughs> when? I like to keep my fights open-ended. Kind of like your changes. selfies? 
Ooh. Where, you know, is, is this really about me or is this <laughs> something profound that I want to speak to? Yeah. Whenever there's a good looking picture, and a lot of people will comment on a lot of pretty girls will post a flattering picture of themselves and they do a quote like, Oh, I can't stand it. After you weather the storm, the spirit of the heart stays true. Yeah. And I'm like, Well, that's exactly what I was thinking while I was looking at your both butt cheeks fully exposed on the beach, reaching down for a sand dollar with an overly surprised look on your face like, Sand dollars on the beach. What's a sand dollar? Wait a minute, two butt cheeks. <laughs> Where's my head at? <laughs> oh, such a loser. Yeah. <laughs> the Jew and you. But I don't mind. I don't mind when a girls. Sand dollar. It's a beach. Uh, it's like a beach treat. You know. I don't. It's like uh, I don't know where they we'll come from. We'll put up a picture of a sand dollar for the YouTube. Yeah, it's version. a really fun. Some weird beaches have it. There's one beach I went to with my one of my mom's boyfriends after the divorce. Thanks for bringing it up. One of my um, mom's boyfriends. Har his Jeez. name was Harvey Greenberg. Probably still is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and remember, we went to Ocean Shores, Ocean Shores, and uh, and we found sand dollars. He's like, "Hey, you can find sand dollars. Why don't you guys?" Now that I think about it, I think he was getting us out of the house so we could mm -hmm. fuck my mom. Oh, he was like, go find oh, oh. another hot take. I don't know what I, I don't know what I think is harder to believe: the fact that, that Harvey Greenberg that Harvey is alive, Green, that Harvey Greenberg <laughs> got you out of the house to fuck your mom by finding sand dollars, or if the reason, if the reason Eddie Murphy didn't, didn't win, win the, was because of Norbit. Which, by the way, here's why I think that both that, of those are true. Here's why I think that theory is wrong. If they're gonna give him the nod. Or is it Nam? We'll get into it in a second. <laughs> then he's on the ballot. Let's give it to him or not. I don't think people are like, he's good enough to be nominated, but we're not going to vote for him. But before we get into that, is it the Emmy nod or any Nam? Emmy Nam. Nam is short for nomination, but nod, I always felt like people are like, you know what? He got the nod. Yeah. They do say nod, I, well, those, for sure. Those people have just, those are the people at the airport that see the one long line and go, that's where we're supposed to stand. And they don't try to think for themselves and go, there's actually two people to the side that are actually in a line, everyone's just chosen to assume that this is the line. When there is clearly another space to stand and, and get aboard. You heard it here first. Adam thinks that the reason <laughs> Norbit got in the way from Dreamgirls <laughs> is because of the airport stuff. Fuck my mom. <laughs> and that is read the Hawaii's room. Best smoke pot, man. Hawaii exudes the vibes of pot just 24-7. Look at it. All right. Uh, wait, was. No one's going to buy my album. <laughs> no, no, we'll play some stuff. I just. No, no, <laughs> <laughs> nah, nah, we're having a good time. <laughs> we're having a good time. Dude, I feel kind of stoned right now. I know, dude. I don't know. Uh, there's, I get we that feeling when I'm time. around you. I, oh, I often feel high when I'm around you. Yeah, it's a good thing. Yeah. Uh, creatively, yeah? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> just, yeah. No, it's just like well, a lot of control, and I, I feel a little paranoid, and I just want to be by myself. <laughs> <laughs> we turn these mics on. <laughs> Remember the first time we got real high was at my old apartment. At the time, that was the highest I'd ever been in my life. I love that. I was also one of the, you know, it's really cool when you uh, first start just being in this business and comedy in general. And in those times, and we're still grinding, but like starting out, those were yeah. probably three, four years in for me. And you and I had met at the Ha Ha mm -hmm. um, when I saw you on stage and thought you were hilarious. And then you were talking about Magic the Gathering and I had all these questions because my younger brother had tried to play with me, um, teach me that game, and then he just cheated a bunch. <laughs> so that was my, he'd literally be like, oh, my Balbazar beats your uh, Thromarius. And I was like, why? He's like, because it has more kill points. And I go, yeah, but mine, mine has a higher number on the card. He's like, yeah, but this for this game? Yeah, that's its defense. It's the first number is attack, and if the attack is stronger... For sure, defense. but he was clearly making up rules because he was ten and a little piece of shit, and uh, and he also like, you know, stole. Uh, I think I had a ring at the time, like some pinky ring. It's probably right that he stole it, but he stole it and gave it to a friend of his. And then when I asked him, and then the the kid's mom actually returned the ring, and and then he was like, "Oh, I found it," and I was like, "The mom came back and said you gave it to," mm. and he was like, "Oh." And so I was like, all right. So he's now he's probably the same guy that stole all the money from Monopoly to have. So when they set up the game, he already had it in his pocket. Yeah. Because a lot of people don't steal the money. They don't. I, no, I think you just grew up with a cheating brother. Yeah. Oof, I'm sorry. It's okay. Um, I'm over it. <laughs> That's Adam Ray, who is <laughs> over his cheating brother, read the room <laughs> on I iTunes. But well, you so should cheat at promotions. Magic the Gathering. Uh, Facebook is, is big for the promotional uh, part of this job, but uh, it's also great for connecting. Let's be honest. That's what we all use it for. So many people I've found and uh, rediscovered from my past. I went to elementary school with a girl named Audrey Clitgard, and I forgot about that shit. Um, yeah. 
K-L-I-T-G-A-R-D. What a home run day that was. I was just like, <laughs> and I got to have that again, you know? I got to go take a trip down Clitgarn Lane for a minute, you know, and remember, rem remember a better time when the economy was strong and Audrey Clickgard. How does that happen, by the way? Were the options limited at Ellis Island that day? All right, sir, you can either have <laughs> Dick Sponge, Ass Tickler, or Click Guard. <laughs> oh, fucking Click Guard's probably the, gonna get the least amount of teasing. <laughs> I like that joke. Yeah. It's also very. It's also very yeah, true. It's also very true. That's funny. It is right. Uh huh. I also just like that because everybody. I get a lot of people hitting me up now, but telling me the names of people that they went to school with that had, you know, standout uh -huh. names. We also had a Michelle Virgin. Remember they would call her to the office. Boop. Michelle Virgin, please come to the office. Dude, Ooh. kids were probably laugh so much every oh, time. We had that. a Betch Ho, Vietnamese. Huh. B E T C H with like a hyphen. H O uh, hyphen or uh, uh, apostrophe. Betch Ho. And and people would be like, What up, bitch? And she was like, What up? Your mom was a hoe. Your daddy's a hoe. <laughs> oh, yeah. We had a kid. Uh, uh, Chad. I don't do accents. I was an Italian guy. <laughs> <laughs> we had a kid. Uh, Chad balls smells like shit. <laughs> and whatever, whatever they would call him to the office, I can remember it like it was yesterday, dude. Oh yeah, dude, they would yeah. be like, it'd be like beep. And even the principal thought it was funny. You yeah. could tell because you'd be like, because the principal is the one who called him down. <laughs> dude, Just we had so a small he could school. Say his name. Yeah, yeah. He's like, um, sometimes the this kid was such a good kid. It was, yeah, such a, it was so they ironic. Would call him down <laughs> just so the principal could say his name. It turns out that principal ended up. He ended up. Yeah, we can say it now. Donald Trump, much? Ooh. I don't want to isolate the audience, but Donald Trump. Or the audio. <laughs> yes. Uh, or the audio. Don't correct me like that on oh, the, on the my, podcast. My yeah, okay. You also did that right into the mic. I'll edit it out. Just to be cool. <laughs> all right. Look at me. Look, be cool. Let me do it again, all right? Yeah. Yeah, so we had a principal who uh, I won't say his name, but it rhymes with Monald Rump. No, no. Still skin. Fuck. Dude, I hate when a bit falls off. Yeah, I know. <laughs> we worst. had it. We had it. It's the worst feeling in the world. It's worse than... You know how people say it's better than sex? I hate sex so much that I say it's worse than sex. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I hate sex, dude. Let's talk about sex. Okay, I don't really hate sex. Um, I just don't like when it's not at least making like. Does that make sense? No. Making love is a beautiful thing. It is. I'm not in love at the moment. It doesn't mean I'm not willing to have sex. And you are making love. You're never just straight fucking. I sometimes I'll fuck and yeah. sometimes I'll make like and sometimes I'll make love. Rarely do I have sex. So making like is unpassionate like, sex? No, making like is I really like this girl. I'm connected with her. I'm not in love with her. I don't right. know if I'm going to have a future with her. Yeah. But like I, I'm, I want to connect with, with her. But I can have a night. I can have, I can have a week. Great. That's fun. But sex to me, it, it, like sex with someone you don't at least like really like yeah. is just like, oh, I'm not going to. It's fine. Neither yeah. of us are coming, especially you. <laughs> like, you know, just honestly, like it's harder. Well, also when you say that. And believe it. it yeah. It's well, when you say that to her as it's happening, that's like when a lot of people don't know this, they're not fans of that. And they being. You are, you be, are you being serious? Or are you making a joke right now? Because I, I do tell them, I do let them know sometimes beforehand. No, you don't. I, 100%. So, so I've, I think I've talked about this on a podcast before. But you say, hey, look, I'm going to try my best. Let me tell you, but yes. I can't guarantee yes. that things are going to go the way that you want them to. In a way. I, in a way. So I, I have had some... Do you finish and go, Boop. just came, table for one. No. Okay. Never. God yeah. forbid. Yeah, don't do that. <laughs> I don't want to waste a God forbid on that. But <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what do I, you think the first person was that said, God forbid? I uh, I assume it was my grandma. Yeah, which, by the way, can we get some more Insta stories of Grandma Glassman? Yes. Go, go, go. Oh, you motherfucker, why do you run? Oh, yeah, yeah. You asshole, why did they run? That's just one. <laughs> okay. Let's get, we gotta, it, there's more. This, it's, you can't have one without the other, or the other. Let's, here's another one. This is your grandmother. Hold him. Get him, get the fucker. Yes. Fumble, we got fumble, the ball. Fumble. We got the ball. We got the ball. We got the ball. Yeah, dad a lot, dad a lot, dad a It's very rare to get a, a mixture of not safe for work English and Yiddish. Oh, there's the last one. This is how she celebrated a win, I believe. Okay. Okay. Here we go. Ready? 
Browns win. Oh my God, the motherfucking assholes, they won it! Oh my God! Oh, thank you, thank you! That woman, if there was a show that needed a great grandma, and not like a, an older grandma, but like a great, like I'm oh, using that almost, adjective. She's almost 90. And this is what we want. Well, a hashtag, uh, you Grandma need... Gloria Glassman on Instagram. <laughs> Can she travel? Not well. Bummer. Can she travel locally? Unfortunately, yes, but she has to get local. Does she own a scooter? She doesn't. Here we go. You, Grandma Glassman, on a scooter, traveling down the street. You just go to a bunch of different bakeries, try out all the pastries, the snacks. Adam, see which there, one's the best one. Adam, there were two times I was trying to have a real heart to heart about sex with you. And how are we ending up with grandmas on scooters? <laughs> you know what I mean? How do we go from how do we go from me I guess I'm not reading the room. <laughs> Always that moment too, right? We've all had that moment where you I don't know, it sounds like you were there. <laughs> That's reading the room. By the way, that club just closed where I recorded my album, The Punchline in San Francisco. Shout out to the club line at Popisitsko, dude. The punchline, dude. <laughs> It's a famous club. I'm very sad about it. Why All did right, it close? So, I don't know the ins and outs, but it's a real big bummer. That club's been around for, I think, yeah. 30 plus years. Yeah. I feel like a comedian died. For oh. me, I, that was my favorite, one of my favorite clubs. The, uh, I have an analogy top, for you. Top two, for sure, in the country. You feeling like a comedian died when that club closed yeah. makes me feel like... Have, uh, uh, have you seen the movie They Came Together? Paul Rudd, Amy yes, Poehler, it's I love David Wayne movie. Uh, movie. Great movie. Fantastic movie. In it. Isn't that crazy? David Wayne's directed you and Paul Rudd. Uh, I don't think it's that crazy. Okay. I had David Wayne on last week. It should be coming out. I don't know what will come out first. Good for you, dude. Was it great? It was fantastic. But we talk about this thing I'm about to tell you. Great. Which he wrote a bit in there, which is, is so funny because it's an... I'll tell you the bit first. The bit is uh, Paul Rudd is telling Bill Hader about his story of how, they, how he and Amy Poehler met. And it's kind of like a romantic comedy. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, well, we met in New York, and it's interesting. It's kind of like New York is a character in the movie. Yeah. And they're like, oh, and that's such like a cliche people say in this business. Yeah. Uh, when we did Undateable, um, Bill Lawrence, our, our boss, yeah. would say a lot of times in the network meetings, he would be like, and I want to make sure people recognize that Detroit is in itself one of the characters on the show. And when I first heard that, I thought, that's brilliant. And then I started hearing a place. I'm like, oh, that's just kind of like a move. Yeah. So you saying that the punchline is kind of like a comedian dies? The same, a place is a character. Yeah, I'm still very sad that it closed. Oh, right. I'm sorry about that. Yeah, it's okay. I've never played there. I've never been to San Francisco. Oh, you would destroy there. Well. That, that could have been a place that I could have brought you with me. You know, I want to, because we've done so many <clears throat> goofy things, yeah. I want to get into some real stuff. Let's get back and, to sex at some point, though. Sure. But what you just said touches on something that I think is gr a great personal dynamic that I have with mo a, a few c people, comedians, but definitely one I have with you. You said that is a place that I feel like I could take you to. Yeah. And behind that, what I'm reading is the obvious. There are places you don't necessarily feel comfortable taking me to. Sure. And I would love, I would love to get into that. I was at the uh, New Miami Improv. And uh, in Miami, Florida, and a rowdy, uh, uh, just not a. Uh, a lot of the shows weren't super booze fused, but like uh, big room, and uh, I don't think as conducive for like uh, humor as smart as yours. You know what I'm saying? And um, humor is smart. I take there's a compliment. Yeah. But what does that mean? Well, the, it's just, not that it's. Is is my? I, I think it's I mean, a look, I think you're you saying can, I'm smart, but yeah. also I don't think the that, room was just it, it just uh, it just didn't. Um, first, first of all, I think intimate rooms uh, I feel like are best for what you do. I agree. And um, cities that are not just like overly polite, but like people coming because they're real big comedy fans, and that room in Miami. Uh, just was like kind of rowdy and not that you wouldn't be able to handle that but you wouldn't be at your best because you'd be like i ended up doing more crowd control than i think i've done in a while mm -hmm. and i i think you need to have all your weapons at your disposal to be at your best you know which we all do yeah we all do but especially like but you know and this is just again m my opinion and based on what i've seen and, sure and and also for me it, it's like 
you know, I would want you to be in a place where you're set up to win, you know? I understand. Yeah. Uh, I have an interesting dynamic with uh, a lot of my peers, um, some, of, some of which my, my, my friends. Um, we've been doing comedy. I, I'm at, I'm at uh, 12 years. Um, you're probably at, I'm guessing, 15, 16? No, 12. Really? Yeah. When I first met you at the, at the Ha Ha uh, Cafe in North Hollywood, you were so far ahead of me. That I always just when I say that I mean just I I didn't know what I was doing. I mean, like, and I th- you were so funny. I did. So I always much, assumed that you were. I did so much longer. theater. I guess that I was just comfortable on stage, and I'd always been. I was such an like what I am on stage and uh, like an you know a little heightened animated version of myself mm-hmm. is, you know how I am when I'm hanging out more or less. I mean, it's there is an elevated aspect because you're performing, but. That's how I was with friends in high school, like telling stories and making people laugh. So it really was an extension of me, and I felt like it wasn't too big of a transition. And then doing so much theater in high school and college especially, uh, I I just felt comfortable. Mm. So maybe that's why it seemed like I was a little for the like and then it, and then it's just writing at that point. Even the jokes I was doing that weren't, you know, um, you know, turning heads and people being like, holy shit, did you hear his take on the Folgers coffee jingle? This guy's fucking the next Bill Burr. Even though that wasn't happening, let's hear it. I always, the I, always club. I always, I always like that because it's it, this is a great melody. Well, and this was this I remember. Was, I remember the bit. I would close with it if I did a three minute set or a twenty minute uh-huh. set. I, I remember. I remember the bit very well. So I go, uh, boy, uh, I, how did how would I? <laughs> this was not the. It was. Setup. It, it was. It was. Uh, I'm uh, talking about misleading slogans. Yes, I think I would do a Nyquil bit in before that. You don't need the Nyquil bit. Yeah. It was basically just saying really. It was. It I was, go. Uh, I go. Man, I was. Uh, Saw so commercial for, for, for commercial for Folgers coffee the other day. You always got to uh, be. It's always got to be the other day. You know, yeah, day, God forbid. Yeah. And I'll use it here. That you it was, say I saw a commercial eight months ago. <laughs> well, that's not new. Tell us something you saw recently. Well, yeah, there is something. Yeah, there is something to be said about that. The audience does feel disconnected if it's if it's recent. They're like, oh shit, this just happened. Hey, hey, Pam, this just happened. I'll uh, let's so talk go, about that. But do the bit first. Uh, saw a commercial for Folgers coffee the other day. Uh, you know their slogan, real catchy. The best part of waking up is not no, I mean, it's, it's, full, it's Folgers in your cup. And I go, eh, is it? And that would get a laugh. And uh-huh. I go, it's kind of misleading. You know, I feel like they're not being completely honest with us. You know, to me, that slogan should be, the best part of waking up is not dying in your sleep. And then I go, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I uh, would always get a, you know, I, I and then people would recite it to me because that was such a yeah, the jingle so catchy, such a, such a stupid joke, and so people for a while because I did it so consistently for probably at least five six years. Could I hear you sing the actual jingle without a comedy voice, like really the best you possibly can? Oof, I don't know. Okay. <clears throat> the best part of <laughs> no, your even your your eyebrows are up so much it's very animated. Really, just sing it. Okay. The best. No, pop. come on, man. It's tough. You can't. It's. I'm being. That's my real singing. No, voice. it's not. There's no way. Oh, fuck, dude. I thought this was a place I could be myself. Okay, here we go, Ray. The best. Okay, and that's the point. <laughs> There's something you're able to sell me all Let your me truths. Try. You're no. not trying. You're not doing it. You're making. Well, a you're joke. not letting me try. The best part right. of waking See, I get, up I get the pattern is phones in your cup. Dude, like this. You ready? Yeah. The best part of waking up is Folgers in your cup. <laughs> okay. The best part of waking up is Folgers in your cup. Yeah, I understand the choice to walk it down because yeah. it was out of your range. I no. still felt you put. I wow. still felt you put enough, accepted. Yeah, Randy and Travis. You, you put a little oh, wait, effect no, on it. Not Randy know. Travis. Who was the guy on the American Randy Idol? Jackson? <laughs> <laughs> Who's Randy Travis? I think he's a country singer. Oh. <laughs> or Travis Tritt, at least. By the way, nobody has ever been like, "Hey, slow your roll, Randy Travis." <laughs> Dude, check this out. Also, Jeez Louise. Where did that come from? I don't know. Who gives a shit though? Obviously. <laughs> Check this out. <laughs> what did Louise do? <laughs> the All best right. part of the best part of waking up is Folgers in your cup. 
The best part of waking up is folders in your cup. That's what I'm talking about. How'd that feel? Great. People are doing construction <laughs> upstairs. I'm sorry to everybody that's listening to that. <clears throat> I'm so sorry. Also, you and I doing a podcast together, if I were to picture what it would be like of you coming to my apartment and yeah. it's like, let's talk about some serious stuff. I'd like to do a quick hard cut to the best part <laughs> for like nine minutes. <laughs> The, the best, best part of waking, waking up, up is folders in, in your cup. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> and the worst content possible. It's like we have so many personal stories. I know. We're literally 40, 40 plus minutes in, and all we've talked about is I wonder why it's called Jack and Jill or whatever the fuck you just said. You know, <laughs> <laughs> something about Julie Louise Dreyfus or whatever. You know, I don't know. Jeez Louise. Yeah, who gives a shit? You know what I mean? <laughs> I mean, who Wait, gives a shit? I, I we do, have so many great stories. I do want to talk about that first time we got real high. You okay. know what I'm saying? Right. Wait, uh, another, it was at my old apartment. But I, let me, I want to reestablish the context of what, 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 I, what I thought is, what I think is so romantic about that is when we're first starting out and we're, like you said, less yeah. than five years in, there's a fraternity feel that still exists, but we're a, around each other more so much when more. You start out. Because you go to a club for three hours. We'll go to the comedy store and we'll get there at eight trying to get on maybe one of us gets on early but we still stay there until one o'clock yeah. until all of the friends went yeah. up then you go to a diner or something so we're just in each other's lives yeah. so much yeah. and we're not funny and then when we hang out when i went to your place for the first time that was when it went from oh adam's a, a guy that i see at the comedy clubs that i think is super funny yeah to now i have a new friend yeah uh, and that well, that's what's cool about it. and and also <clears throat> and this is why to any young comedian doing it the hanging out is so um, imperative because I remember we were at the parlor and even I was like, oh, I should go home and work on some stuff. But it was a fun hang. And I was like, no, I got to hang. And I, I want to get more comfortable here. And I want to talk to some of these older comics mm -hmm. that I haven't talked to. And, and even guys that are, that I'm starting with, like, you know, it's important to be, to not be in and out. Cause you want to feel, and for me, I've always felt that way. Like, and even now at clubs, I'll get to know the staff and stuff because I need to have some rapport to feel comfortable to do my thing on stage. Um, and also people that were making me laugh like you would. I was like, oh, I want to like, and then I lived, remember, like a couple blocks from there. So a handful of us walked over there. I don't know who else. But then um, we Sandy got, was there. Sandy, we Sandy got real Dan high. Though. And we started watching the making of Space Jam or Who Framed Roger Rabbit. I, we watched one of those. I, I, I only <clears throat> remember the way I felt. I don't remember what. We had a giant beanbag chair. Uh -huh. And this was my old place, which was just so. And you had, you had snacks that were as if we were. Uh, cat, if we were if we riding, robbed a soccer mom yeah, I was on her say, way to the jamboree um can i do with the one i was gonna do yeah if we were shooting a scene where these are a whole bunch of stoners the types of oh why don't we get them some funyuns some yeah. starbursts yeah. some soda pop yeah it's <laughs> you a know? commercial for weed yes or for the snacks just just no just something like to show this is it's like people who don't smoke weed. This is what they think stoner munchies are. Oh, great! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, bubblelicious, yeah. yeah. bubble gum. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. We we'll get hot dogs with Cheerios on top. Oh <laughs> man, Oreo cookies dipped in ketchup. <laughs> yeah, but just the just the cookie part. <laughs> right, 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 right. And we'll dip the cream part in mayonnaise. <laughs> Dude, weed's awesome. <laughs> yeah, I will get to, yeah. get to it. There was a thing in my fraternity, by the way, at USC, where it was uh, Stony Creation Night, where because um, people called us a, our frat a -E was pi. A, a pi people was called A E High, which is a very Jewish fraternity. A E High. I turned a shofar into a bong, um, but I'm kink. I said that by oh, the way. You can't say that. <laughs> what? What? Say, but I'm Asian American. <laughs> That's Adam Ray on Read the Room. Oh, no, it's not a show. Uh. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Those are the type of applause breaks I get, by the way, where like three people get it and they're too uncomfortable to laugh. They go like, no. they laugh oh. because they understood, not because no, it was funny. Great. Oh, um, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> you heard it here first. No, but these, uh, you know, we we would. Um, I did do that joke though, the bong at a show for when I did some uh, show at a Hillel, mm -hmm. like a Jewish community center. Oh, that's I just kill. did like I was like, yeah, I turned a you know made a bong out of a menorah, or whatever. I, or with the bong of the show for, I was like, I was like, tequila, 
I was like, Takia Doritos. <laughs> and they lost it, <laughs> dude. This was like two years in. I was like, what am I doing here? But so we would uh, smoke pot, and then uh, all the brothers in the fraternity, uh, the pledges, excuse me, would uh, on Stony Creation Night would have to come in and present Stony Creations. And all the brothers would get high and sit in the uh, brotherhood room, and these kids would come in and present it like, chopped top chef style <laughs> and come in and be like uh, what we made here is a peanut butter butterfinger casserole uh <laughs> everyone would just be like holy shit what's in it and they're like well there's red vines on top uh golden grams as the crust and you literally just hear guys going whoa <laughs> and we would just get high as balls and they'd come in uh all right we made a pizza pancake burrito with a cool rip uh cool rip salsa <laughs> <laughs> and um, and literally just the craziest shit. And I remember one kid came in. And he was like, "This is what I call a uh, Twinkie burger, where it's just um, sh- look. I ran out of time. I've been busy this week, so I just put some Twinkies inside of a burger." <laughs> and everyone was like, "Best one, best one, still creative." <clears throat> that just goes to show you that you don't have to say it was the other day to connect with people. This was when you were in college. Yeah. I think that when people say, yeah, I saw uh, a Folgers commercial the other day. For me, and maybe I'm projecting this, but this is my truth. When I hear a comedian say the other day, I will automatically feel a little skeptical as they continue to tell the story. Yeah. If if you're lying about this, what else are you fabricating? To me, yeah. to me, I feel I prioritize well, a- I prioritize truth over comedy and sometimes to my detriment because a lot of times people believe me and that becomes a problem because now they're just uncomfortable because they think I tripped on purpose or right. whatever the, the right. gag may be. Right. But to me, humor is still important and it's close, but it has to come second. And you don't you could you don't have to tell the truth on stage. Obviously we're all heightened versions of ourselves. But if it doesn't seem like the performer is believing what they're saying. A lot of people will argue this point by the way. I know comedians that I, I know are very that are just like funny is funny or Funny is king. Like, we're up there to entertain. And this also, I think, and I'm not going to mention names, but comedians have told me this, that they really back this philosophy. It's like, yeah, well, let's like, look at some of the stuff you're doing on stage. Like, it's bottom of the barrel. You know, like, just be funny. Just be entertaining. That's our job. And right. it's like, yeah, well, then if, if that's all you're leading with, then you aren't ever going to achieve some, um, you're not going to push yourself truly the way you can because you're just like, just get the laughs, right? <clears throat> so, uh, so people say to me all the time in my personal life. Truth does matter, though. I can't do anything, and all my material is based in something. Like all the stuff I talk about with my nieces and and um, and my past at Universal Studios and and dating, whatever, and drinking. Even a, I have this joke about a uh, you know a buddy of mine getting so drunk he used to get DUIs in the backs of Ubers, you know, mm-hmm. and like that's based in. Um, truth because like just being with him and being so drunk in an uber where you know the uber guy getting really there's probably another story there to be had about the exchange with him and the uber guy but there was a point where <clears throat> i was like you know if we get pulled over like you're definitely going to get a dui and he was like I can't get one in the back of an uber and i was like yeah but you will be the first you know because you are and he was, he was close to like grabbing the wheel of the uber driver like it was dangerous but nobody wants to hear that in the joke yeah, but it does. It does. Uh, tr- truth and jokes aren't mutually exclusive, and it's about being believable, not just telling facts. Yeah. So all else equal, I, 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 uh, I, my, I remember my fraternity brothers. This was like ten years ago. Brought in this Twinkie burger, and it was the simplest one, but it was delicious. The moment you say, "I was just in a frat when I was just in my fraternity a couple weeks ago," the, the way you just looked away. Yeah. Um made me feel not present with you anymore <laughs> and it's tough for me to connect and continue talking you started to do the twinkie burger thing as if it was your own story no no i'm trying to i'm trying to, to uh, oh, I, I was re- referencing again that the fraternity <clears throat> that doesn't I don't have, have to, to say yeah it doesn't have to be the other day i didn't say that it was earlier you said the folgers cup is the other day and you're like yeah because if you don't say the other day then people are like oh i don't care yeah and i said i want to go back to that and, and here we are right and that's just a microcosm of what i feel like truth is yeah. in comedy if when i watch somebody if the story's good it can hold up right there's no m- shelf more, life. more specifically like that because not everything is a story for me for a lot of a lot of my comedy is is playing with an energy and 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 playing with situations and when i watch a performer and I believe them. It doesn't matter if I disagree with them or not. Yeah. I'm engaged with them because I'm seeing something real. Even if they're up there talking like this for whatever reason, if, they're, if they have a real point of view about it. 
So I, I'm. And who, and who was that? I don't want to name names. <clears throat> Do you want to water or something? Kathy Griffin. <laughs> I don't want to say names, man. Do your Kathy Griffin again. So my instincts right now are are really lighting up. Wait, there's some red flags that are lighting up. And a couple of things that are happening. One, I'm not happy that we're not getting into some of these real stories that we keep getting away from. Yeah, especially me too. because I know that you have to get going in a, in a short amount of time. Oh, we're good. We got 15 minutes. Two. Also, we can do a part two. I'll come back anytime. Or are you like a? We'll do one. Yeah, you're not a see two, how it goes. You're not a part two guest. Great. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> the way you said "great" made me feel so uncomfortable yeah. that you took that seriously. Yeah. Because that's the way you respond if you yeah. believe it. No, I'll have you as a part two. I'll probably only air part two. <laughs> but what I'm saying is, I meant no disrespect. You're one yeah. of my favorite people. I love you. But we do so many bits, and I, I on my own do too many bits. I don't. I you are a bit machine, <laughs> and I want to make sure that we get some of this good stuff. Yeah, uh, right. out there. So you, we were talking about. Um, you left my place that night, and right, I was right. like, "Oh, Rick's when, a great dude. I can't wait to hang again." And that was that was just a a uh, probably a, a turning point in the friendship, but also like a cool example of just like because there was a part of me that was like, "Oh, don't go." And this is again is um, you know advice, take it or leave it, but. You know, there's always a reason to not do something. You know, yes. There's always excuses we can make to like, oh, I should do that, or I'm not gonna get that audition, so I shouldn't prep and go on it, and I'm just gonna turn it down because or, you know, there's always a reason to <clears throat> talk yourself out of something, or I should do this instead of that. Reading the room, uh, reading your own room, reading the room inside your heart. Um, can I change the title of my album? Is it too late? <laughs> yes. Uh, <laughs> also, you gave the same example nine times. <laughs> You know, like, uh, if, like, there's a million reasons to not do something. Like, you could want to do something, but then you could find a reason not to. Like, like you're about to it, t take a shit, and it, then you're like, I'm not going to. I should get on, <laughs> I should get on this plane. Yeah. yeah. You know? Yeah, we get it. <clears throat> so Here, Here's a reason to not give nine examples of something. You're leaving in 15 minutes. Okay? So I, that night, I was like, I should go home and work. But then I was like, you know, this is fun. Let's go hang. Because then it was brought up. It was proposed. Wait, like, what's the context of this? Is this... <clears throat> The hangout we had at my place. No, I was making a joke for you to oh. for you to say. You know, sometimes there's a reason to <laughs> yeah. not do something. Look, sometimes you're telling a story and you're like, maybe don't tell it, <laughs> but you tell it anyway. All right. So uh, we went to my place anyway, and with a big group, and we smoked and hung, and then like you end up staying the latest because you got so high you couldn't drive. I couldn't walk. <laughs> I, I I slept over and left <clears throat> at like like we fucked. I left when the sun came up <laughs> because <laughs> I, I was I was so. Hi, I was so I had never experienced that before because I had smoked pot sometimes and loved it. Yeah, but I took a couple of hits and wow, this is great. No, we all because got we're real. hanging out. Yeah, I'm smoking for hours. Yeah, and I, I so and so that I, I, stayed I couldn't up. stop laughing. I stayed up because I remember you were. I was exhausted. I probably got gone to bed two hours prior than when I did. Uh, but I was just like, oh, I felt bad because you were like, remember at one point you were like, hey, is it cool if I just stay here for a little bit because I'm too fucked up to go outside. And I remember I rem being that a very, that was a very profound statement. You were like, I'm too high to go out there. We don't know what's out there. <laughs> and I was like, all right. <laughs> Listen, man. I don't want you to have this to. This is pre-Uber, but even if so, we don't even know what's out there. <laughs> yeah, that was a big statement. And I was like, yeah, I mean, I do. There's a psychic place across the street. Pink's is probably still open. You could probably get a, you know. Hot dog. A Katie Curry dog or something. I remember, I remember feeling insecure because one, this is a new friendship between you and I, and two, that was a moment where uh, in my life where I recognized because of how much I liked making new friends, I realized, oh, I never really had this. Yeah. So I didn't want to blow it. So I remember I felt uncomfortable, like because you, you stayed up, yeah. and and, and I, I wanted it, like I don't remember what I said to you. I feel like I would have said, "You could go to sleep. It's okay." You did. But you stayed up with me, and I remember not. I remember not not sure if you were like doing me a favor, and I was a putting you. I was putting you out. No, I just a, can't go outside right now, man. Yeah, I'm an adult. I could have gone to bed. I could have been like, "You're on your own. Hope the sleeping bag doesn't eat you." You know. Uh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Which, by the way, that's never what you want to hear. It ate my friend the other day. Was it really the other day, or was this a long time ago? <laughs> Do you remember my roommate at the time? Of course not. I had a roommate. That what was, was his name? <clears throat> 
I'm not going to say it. Oh, I, I, I lipped to you. <laughs> say I don't know because I thought that would be a funny bit. I c- coached you on camera <laughs> the joke that I wanted to coaching hear. Coaching on camera. If you could do an audition class called Coaching on Camera Oof. where you basically do the audition for the person. Do you know my first uh, taste of stand-up was a VHS that my mom bought me called You're As Funny. Hey, You're As Funny as Fozzie Bear. Yes. And I watched it and it was an act-along thing. What's Fozzie Bear? What? Fozzie Bear? I've The Muppet? Fozzie? Yes. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm uneducated with a lot of things. Wow. So, um, Brady Matthews just did me a giant uh, painting of Fozzie Bear. <clears throat> oh, my God. I have a... Uh, when you were telling me about your... Uh, yeah, your, I wanted to be your, a... Um, your halal bit. I, I wanted to be of- a, a, a puppeteer. Uh for the longest time who 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 didn't grow up wanting to be a puppeteer a lot of people i shell silverstein diane keaton uh robert redford mary fuck kill (laughs) (laughs) dude it's so hard to have conversations you know it's hard to have conversations with regular people i know yeah i brought i brought up my my puppet can i can i have uh how your hands i normally don't let people touch it clean as fuck dude these hands went inside Miss oh, no, Piggy no, 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 once. No, on the uh, on the put the coffee. These on the hands tray, went inside Miss Piggy once when I interned at the Henson Studios when they did this jazz standards um, uh, documentary or special. My buddy's dad was shooting it, and so he got us jobs as PAs at the Henson. And we it was when the Henson Creature Shop was still there too. So we had these passes; you can go anywhere. And I walked in the back because <clears throat> I had my pass, and uh, and I'm watching them make Muppets. And the guy showed me this closet where they had all the Muppets in these cases, right? And then he he took one out and he let me. This is like weird and probably sounds, but as a kid, again, dreaming, Jim Henson, God to me. Sure. And um, it was d- devastated when he died. Like probably more so than when my folks split, for sure. And wow. I remember too, I Did got it feel any, any, similar to when the punchline closed? Or would you say punchline is way less than? Way less than, yeah. Um, and so uh, I remember the Seattle Times had uh, Jim Henson, uh, his picture with Kermit in the corner, the right hand, right hand corner of the paper. And I remember... Um, seeing it and um, and my mom I remember was so like sad to like even tell me too mm. like she was like look um, something bad happened and I was like what and she was like I had the last fresca and I was like what and she goes no sorry I was trying to make a joke before I gave you the real bad news um, Jim Henson passed away and I was like but there's still fresca? No. And uh, <laughs> so bad. I was devastated. And I looked at the paper and it was a picture of him. And then I just was like, also, I hadn't really dealt, I'd never experienced death yet. And like, as a, with no relative or friend to kind of give me that experience, mm. like this was the closest thing, but I felt close to him because I used to write him letters. And, and um, Aww. so anyway, so the guy at the creature shop goes, takes out a Miss Piggy. Uh, it's a big one, right? Right. <clears throat> he goes, go ahead, put your hand in it. And I was like, for real dude it was crazy and like got to manipulate it and like it's awesome yeah but i know like cool. to people who don't appreciate that world or think puppets are weird they're probably sitting here watching now being like hey, easy pervert you put your hand inside of a pig who hasn't done that i don't have a very uh, italian american audience <laughs> who was that guy I just did again i'm not good with <laughs> accents that was a filipino lady <laughs> hey, you're guy, here hey, first guy. adam ray hey, you with... want your nails done <laughs> Hey, let me see him though. My hands are clean. Okay. Uh, the guy who made that uh, uh, made uh, puppets for for the Muppets. He also did the Crank Yankers. Oh, coming back. So I did a I did a uh, show across the street at a temple, and I have a, a a bit with the puppet. So I asked my aunt. Was it Temple Betham? Probably. Ah, yes. So I, I asked, was a oh my God. student there <laughs> when I was um, jeez. 15? How old am I? <laughs> Don't look at me. Old enough to get a circumcision. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, I was um, 14 and reading my Torah portion. I mean, the, the people upstairs... Nazis. Are so- <laughs> <laughs> Is this thing on? You're not even in front of it. Did Don't! Tell me how to live my life. I mean, your mouth is moving <laughs> just as much when you talk for you and him. Do you ever do <laughs> no, no, yeah. no, stop. Give me oh, okay, wait, wait, yeah. No, no, no. Oh. Don't, don't. <laughs> Let go. Get your hand out of it. 
don't do masturbation stuff for the puppet. For some reason, for some that reason, was good though, right? That was fine. It was really funny. Um, but when <clears throat> when when a Talus is involved or a Yamaka, yeah, you're right. When I, I keep gro- it clean. Growing up, growing up and going to temple a lot. You know, you'd go every week for Sunday school, and then we'd go every four days for a bar mitzvah for a year and a half Isn't in seventh and eighth grade. Dude, remember bar mitzvah season? You got to let me get this story out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, man. Yeah, do it. You but I, I'm going to have go, to go, tell you sometimes. Go, go, go. Let me get the story out. I'm going. You don't need to rev me up. <laughs> All right? Just shut up. Let me tell my yarmulke story, you asshole. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for swearing yeah, when I say yarmulke. Yeah. Don't bless the Nazis. They're right above you. But above them is the Lord. Great. He's on the third floor. <laughs> and it is a penthouse, baby. <laughs> So g- going to temple, we were told that the yarmulke can never touch the ground. And yeah. if it does, here we go, God forbid, you kiss it and you raise it to yeah. show God that I'm sorry, this was a mistake. Look what I did to prove it. I it's, kissed it. Yes. So so I I look at, tr- I also, I felt this way about the American flag. If the American flag ever touches the ground, you got to burn it or kiss it, which is to me, Two completely op- at opposite ends of the spectrum. Yeah, pick a lane, by the way. Yeah, I decide to kiss because yeah. I'm not burning flags. You're a lover. Not a bur- flag burner. Uh, yeah. So there's still this thing built inside of me of, of, of religious pieces, a talus, a yarmulke, a, 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 like a, a Bible or yeah. whatever, that, yeah, you have to treat it a yeah. certain way. So even though I have this talus around my puppet, which I was saying I had my aunt make when I did the temple show because if a puppet's going to work, imagine putting a talus on him. It's just a guaranteed, you know, it's just a guaranteed prop laugh, yeah. a GPL. So you doing a joke of having this thing masturbate while wearing a talus, I really felt uncomfortable. And I'm like, no, y- well, you can't an, do that, that with a talus. That's, an, that's you know, that's a, a, an a testament. Um, an old testament. Yeah, <laughs> to, uh, <laughs> to how good my puppet skills are. Yeah. But also... Maybe you were a little quick, and hear me out, to assume that he was about to start jerking off. I some read people, the room properly. Some people spit on their hands to scratch their groins. <laughs> Nobody spits on their hands. Have you been to Alabama? I have a huge following in Alabama, and I don't want to be disrespectful to them. All right. But I have heard <laughs> they spit on their hands before scratching their balls. Yeah, and it's always misconstrued. We're an hour in, <clears throat> and we've done... 50 minutes of voices. <laughs> so I have such a good time with you. Me too. And I, 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 don't, I don't know what uh, this feeling I'm having is. It's not an insecurity, but it's the closest thing I could get to it is an insecurity, an uncertainty that this product that I'm making with you, yeah. this podcast, yeah. this episode, and, and I apologize both to the audience for putting a negative projection out and to you that I don't know if how good of a time I'm having, hopefully we're having. Oh, this is the best. It's translating it because is. there's so many things I want to talk about with you. You're good te- good teasers. And also, people want to see comedians hang out. Yeah, you're a podcast. You're the first person I've had on that is a podcaster. Oh, cool. I'm still new to this. Yeah. So to t- tell me. Well, I think my, I think it's a blessing and a curse to have been doing almost now 500 episodes of About Last Night, which you've yeah, been Yeah, About Last Night podcast. Uh, check that out. I've been yeah. on it a few times. I've always had such a good time with you. Team and Crush, yeah. You have so many of our friends on. So I, I do, I, I listen, right now I listen to your podcast. Oh, thanks. Dak Shepard's podcast. That's great. Uh, Eric Griffin, I think he is so funny. Me too. So funny. I love that you say that, dude. There are certain people, and I put you in that same boat, that when I talk about people that are my favorites, E. Griff is at the, at the top. He's just he's um he's just so funny. Yeah. There's nobody more expressive that is um can be cartoony but grounded. He is it looks like when I watch him on stage it looks like this animation is very realistic. You know? Like yeah. he, he We should start calling him CGI. Yeah, it's tough well, to or say Eric that. Griffin. <laughs> it, it, what's that? Or Eric Griffin. Um <clears throat> he's great though. He, uh I saw him uh I've always thought he was funny, but yeah. he, I featured for him in Caroline's a year ago, and I watched him do an hour set for yeah. the first time ever for a week, Yeah, and he blew me away. Yeah, I was also unbelievably stoned. He might be trash, <laughs> but when I was watching, watching him, since then- Watching him? <laughs> no, let's go back there for a minute. He said, if I'm going to feature for him- <laughs> You got to wash him. Just his back. Okay. And cool. Cool. I'm just cool with back. that. So, He's like, do you got my back? And you're like, yeah. He's like, no, seriously, do you got it? Here's a sponge. Here's some dial. Great. So, uh, but since seeing (laughs) soap improv is tough, (laughs) I've been saying that for weeks. 
since watching him do that hour, I've always thought he was funny. Now he just there's certain comics that have a thing like when they do something, it's like I'm in. I know. You know, he's he's, he's also you know, and I'm I'm always trying to push myself in the writing department, but and Griffin or with Griffin is the name of the podcast. By great the way. title. I'm sorry, but, but go on. But he really hits on things too, and he's got such a likable demeanor about. You know, I feel like he he's in that Burr category where I feel like he can tackle anything. You get away with I, anything. I wanna I wanna hear his his um yeah yeah his take on it. But let's go back to you were telling me about the gift and the curse of having done 500 podcasts. And oh your yeah, experience with like them. I when I'm on podcasts sometimes I don't. I like to go on tangents and get back to things. Yeah, and I have I, I I've done so many that where I sit back and the questions, uh, the people just ask a question and don't play back and forth to where I have to talk a lot and mm -hmm. just fill it up, you know, and do all the work. So I sometimes get conditioned to um, do that and not maybe sit back and give an answer and then let you drive the ship. I feel like we're, we're, um, we're driving together, you know? Yeah. But you that's do, you more do fun feel like me. we're driving together right yeah. now. Good. I, I don't you know. You feel like you're in the back. N no, no, I um. But see, like, I don't have a feeling about who's in control or who should be in control. Sh 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 um, what I was gonna say though, <laughs> be quiet for a second. Let me let me finish. I was we're quick. Oh see. yeah, yeah. It's because as a guest, I want this to be about you. Yeah, you're the food. I'm the fork and knife. People are using me to get in the nutrients that are my guests. Yeah. So hold on, let me finish. No, I'm just kidding. Go ahead. So what are the questions that you would have asked me had we just done a straight I, up? I, I could have a whole... I still have a whole bunch of them, and, I, and I'll get to that in a second. Do you have them written down? No, I, I thought of some. And also, as we organically talk, I because I, I, there's nothing more I love doing than bits. I love bits so much, and you are a bit you machine. Want to marry Remember at the... Oh, uh, come on, man. I just, dude, that was one of the first lines. That's a bad burn. That's a at, big burn. As a kid. Yeah, when someone loves something, you, you, you not you only want do you, to marry not only do you take away <clears throat> the, the positivity that they have for the thing they're speaking of, you then step in and make it about, you, not you, Adam, but the person, the bully. Yeah. Yeah, why don't you marry it? Now, not only am I putting them down, they can't continue to explore what they, they're feeling. Yeah. And that's a that's a that's a burn for everyone in the room, not just the person who's in love. There was also always one kid that was like a little more advanced, a little more thought out. He'd be like, he'd be like, God, I love cheesecake. He'd be like, dude, why don't you fucking marry it and then cheat on it, you fucking animal? <laughs> oh. You know, and you're like, well, Yeah, what what's happening at home, Tyler? Mm. <clears throat> but um Back to Eric Griffin. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like where the fuck are we? Give me give me five questions and I'll give you some answers. Give me uh, just to get some of this uh, I, genuine I, curiosity that's, out of the way. That's not that's not what I want to do because no, no, sincerely, that's not what I do because I, I don't wanna I don't mean to make this like an interview. I need answers from you. Yeah. This is I want to have a conversation about certain topics. Right. One of which that we touched on a little bit was the dynamic of young comedians and what it's like to 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 meet people, my experience is you meet people on stage yeah. first. So I see them curating what their funny is. Some yeah. people are even funnier off stage. Some people don't seem funny off stage. Totally. But you get to know what they want to sell first. And then when we hang out with them, now I see who they really are. Right. So I see you on stage. And you're this guy who's doing Tony Danza voices <laughs> and who is is uh who's just characters 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 a lot of act outs yeah a lot of act outs and then when i meet you off stage you realize oh right he's same these are just act outs yeah so i i felt a sense of because i am the same i am on stage as off stage you said earlier the reason that it worked for you so well early on you had done a lot of theater you made your friends laugh so it was easy for you to bring that on stage yeah Two things are great about that. One, that you were able to be yourself on stage, which my understanding is that takes a while. My my experience is it takes a while to watching people to get there. And two... Was I comfortable on stage, though? I felt like I was. Looking back at some old tapes, which I did maybe three years ago, <clears throat> uh, a lot of nervous pacing. Sure. And I was still trying to do um, what I thought a, my what I was as a comic should be. You right. Know? Yeah, yeah, which yeah, is yeah. what you're doing. Because now I do feel like I am myself on stage. Um, I, I, that's 12 years in, so, and I can't imagine what it'll be in another, in another 12, but, but yeah, like at three, four, like still very much like this is what, uh, me as a comedian is, you know, I don't rem I can't, I haven't watched tape of you, um, of, 
Well, I sent it a over. long time ago. I haven't watched a tape of you at year four or five. I only have experienced you when I was there too. So I only remember what it was, and I remember you were amazing. I, it's, it's like I remember. Uh, I remember my dog Shayna being a huge Fan. dog. Yeah. No, a huge dog <laughs> where I just remember thinking all the time, like, that was the biggest dog in the world. It wasn't until I was in my late 20s when I saw a picture of me next to this dog. She must have died when I was two or three. Mm. So I remember seeing it from the vantage point of a two or three year old where this thing is huge. Yeah. So as an adult, I still picture this huge. So just remembering you when we first met, you were one of you were my first friend of somebody who I thought was like, oh, this is one of the guys like you were. You, I had watched you. And laughed out loud so much that it's like, ooh, I want this guy to like me. You know, in a superficial, insecure way, yeah. validation from someone funnier than me means that I'm blah, blah, blah. So we had a conversation outside uh, uh, outside the showroom at the Ha Ha, and we were, I was talking to you about magic. And I didn't talk about magic on stage. At the time, I'm on stage pretending I could float or whatever yeah. stupid bit I was doing. Magic the Gathering, not magic. Magic the Gathering. The, uh... And you were telling me, you should talk about that stuff. And I remember thinking maybe... But you gave me a couple of ideas, and you did a whole bunch of ridiculous nerd voices. And I just remember, <laughs> I just remember, yes, it was funny, but also like, this is fucking awesome. Adam Ray's like doing bits with me about the stuff I'm talking about. Whoa! And it just, and it just felt so cool. I think yeah. I've told you that before. Uh, yeah, you have. Yeah. I think I've told you that before. And then as I got to know you, I realized, oh, you're just another whatever. Mm. But when I first, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I didn't realize your advice was bullshit. Your bits weren't actually that great, and. And something else? <laughs> no, 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 man. I uh, that is cool though. When you, um, I mean, shit, man. I remember being at the Haha and and doing that with Damon Wayans Senior. Mm. We're talking about some stuff and and uh, and how cool that was. But yeah, that's, it's, it's cool when you when you first come out here and not only are you meeting people you were fans of, you 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 become somewhat in a moment an equal with them, where it's like, oh, we're just a couple of comics hanging out before our set. You're you know, you have a house and I'm, you know, worried about rent next month, but we're still right now yeah. here together. And that helped my confidence a lot of realizing, oh, these people are human. I also liked what you were selling, you know, and I liked, I could tell you were you on stage. And even though there was still so much to be discovered and, 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 uh, just, you had a small nugget of something that you were trying to mold into that is what you are now. I could just see in that moment, um, do we get a, we get some fan emails. Uh, yeah. But does the audio pick that up? Uh, yeah, I'll, I could, I could take it out. Leave I'm, it in. You know what? Take it out. <laughs> <laughs> if I end up taking it out, what we were referencing was I got an email alert. If I leave it in, it was. Uh, you probably heard it before. <laughs> what if you edit it in to do a whole thing where you're like, you cut to the camera and you go, look. After that, Adam left. He started hearing things. I think he's quitting comedy. The feeling I'm having right now, the combination of the caffeine in my body yeah. from and not having eaten, and just the Me chem too. chemicals that are released in... Hold on a second. <laughs> the chemicals that are released into my body. Go ahead. I also have had coffee and no food. Okay. I'm having such a good time. Yeah. I feel this way with you all the time, all the time, and I want to be around you so much. Yeah. We say that all it, the time. At auditions, we'll do more bits than we will. Then I'll go in and forget my entire audition. And I'll go I'm, book it. I'm like, <laughs> that's the plan. <laughs> I'm going to outbit everyone in the room so they have nothing left. Walking into a room being like, can you just come out and see what I've been doing in the hallway with Rick? Because <laughs> this is good well, stuff. We heard you. <laughs> we heard both of you. Yeah. And that's why we're having you do the first scene. But there's 12. A lot of times I'll show up to certain casting offices. Uh, not having an audition, looking to do bits with with funny guys. You did a bit with some kid in a waiting room once. Remember, and you had me film it. Of course, I don't remember. I always do bits in the waiting oh, room, dude. But with this kid, and this kid was like such a funny little looking actor kid. He had like freckles and a fat nose, or he'd it's so it adds up to me so far. <laughs> Overalls, I think. Everything about this kid says, yeah, he he did. I think his dick was out. Maybe a rat tail. <laughs> his dick was in, but it was uh, you could tell it was there. And uh, <laughs> uh, how could you tell? <laughs> He's a kid. <laughs> Edit that out, and, uh, and you did this. I'll bit. put an email, an email sound to bleep it. <laughs> Boy, I don't do sound effects. Oh yeah, Police Academy voices. Seven is not calling anytime soon. Yeah, here's here's your idea of sound effects. Oh, I got an email. Let me uh, let me. Uh, oh, I set my email alerts to make a noise when I get an email. Oh, hoo ha! <laughs> you know? So the Pacino email alert, P E A. Yeah, is that your one man show? So look, Hollywood's a crazy town. You're getting emails. You're getting uh, text messages. Whoop, whoop. You're getting <laughs> before I forget up to the Jetsons. <laughs> <laughs> you're 
<laughs> you're getting uh, you're getting catcalled. Hey, nice tits, fatty. <laughs> yeah, when, when people have a skill set that they want to showcase, they m- usually do such a bad job setting it up because they think the skill will cover it. Yeah, like a lot of people will be like, you ever notice how uh, when dinosaurs went in- extinct, the, the, they're, they 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 kind of like made a noise like this. <laughs> It's like, what are you setting up? <laughs> yeah, no one can relate to that. We uh, we should do. There's a live stage show to be had with you and I. And some like when I see um, when I saw uh, the other day uh, when I saw the um, Oh Hello with Mulaney and Kroll. It's great. I was like, oh man, Rick and I could do something like that. Cut to Mulaney and Nick Kroll sitting there list, wa- listening to this for some reason and looking at each other like this. Well, <laughs> <laughs> back to us, guaranteed. Cut to our show with with four people in the audience. We're just playing my album. What are you doing? <laughs> Dude, how are you on time? Can we talk a little bit more? Oof. Is it a traffic thing or you have some place to go? I guess I guess I'm gonna be. A voice of our audition. I could I could stay all day though. Oh well <laughs> Oh, okay. <laughs> I mean, I like I, I would like to. So here's what I want to ask to to my glass and boppers out in the audience, because I have commented a few times now that I was worried that we're doing too many bits. I, and that itself may have been annoying. So I, I'm projecting an insecurity of something that I've been working on in myself, which is sometimes just lay back, be no, just don't feel the need to be on. However, I don't feel a need with you. I no. just it's a chemical feeling that I love to have. Yeah. But it's also a good balance because you want to when you want to make somebody else laugh, that's a good thing. And when you want to try to there's also a, a selfless give and take with us where it's like But it's know. not just about us. People are listening. We're on a similar frequency. I think that some of the stuff we're doing, we're not letting anything breathe or yeah. sit. And also we're joking a joke that maybe wasn't established that strong on this podcast. We just know each other. Yeah. So when listening to this, I could imagine some of it being exhausting. The cameras aren't on. So you know what happened? I I must have not formatted those cards, and the cameras just went off. Do you know how long they've been off? Uh, six minutes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I don't know when the cameras <clears throat> turned off. For those of you listening on iTunes, don't worry about it. For those of you watching on YouTube, uh, I'm just going to put up a stick figure of us. <laughs> I love here. that. But what I, what I want to get out there is uh, people listening, if you're still listening, you know, like a voicemail that's gone on too long. Uh, send me a message and let me know what you think about my projections. If I'm, if you agree, if you agree, but if you disagree, those are the main three. Right. Um, because part of what this podcast is for me is one. I don't like people at my place really. I have a lot of things. That's why I call it "Take Your Shoes Off." I just have a lot of control issues, yeah. and this is my home. But it's, as an exercise, I'm inviting people into my home. I'm also having conversations with them that normally I don't have one-on-one conversations with too many people for an hour. It's, yeah. You know, normally we see each other. It's in a social situation where at least there's a few of us. Yeah. So I want to get good at talking with people. And I remember you said to me, this is years ago. This was, I think, the first time I did your podcast. And you said... I remember speaking of yourself, you said, I remember when I started doing this and not realizing how long it would take me to get good at podcasting in itself, it being its own skill set. Yeah. I guess maybe an, an interview. Yeah. And it's tough to calibrate when I feel so good with you, but who gives a shit watching it? And I don't know if that's true or not, but with you and I, it's boom, 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 boom. Right. And. I want to know, one, I want to know how people feel about that, but two, I feel like that works better if people understand how deep our dynamic is. I feel our, I feel when we do jokes with each other, we're communicating so honestly because it happens. You step on me, I step on you. Yeah. There's, a, there's almost a, there's a give and take, and there's, sometimes I see when you realize you want to give the floor to me, yeah. and you go, no, no, go, go ahead, go ahead. That isn't just an opportunity for me to do a joke. That's a moment where I'm connecting with you. Yeah. Where oh, we are feeling the weight of ourselves. Selves. Yeah. And um, you even finished the the, the word selves, selves, so I know no, it's, it's real. Real. So yeah, I just want to I want to have you back on again. I'd love to. And I want to establish. Let's skip part two and go to part three. Why don't we do part two? Ah, it's too much buildup. 
<laughs> it's not going to be good at this point. <laughs> Why don't we do a quick Cliff Notes version of two now? Great. And then we'll get to three later. Great. Scoot doo. Adam, good to have you back. Oh. The best part of waking <laughs> up. Yeah, I remember that from eight years ago when I had you on the first time. <laughs> so things have gone real downhill for you recently. You look horrible. What yeah. happened? Um, I robbed a store. <laughs> okay, well, we will have you back for part three in another eight years. Give me the puppet. Be respectful. Give me Rick. Rick Jr.? Puppet. Puppet Rick. Puppet Rick. All right, this is how we're going to close out. What time is it? Our only camera that's up is the two shot. So if you want to look to camera, it's got to be the where's two. My, where's my camera? Right uh, over there. Great. Baruch Atah Adonai Elocheinu Melech. What? Can I read my Torah portion without being judged? Baruch Atah Adonai. Uh, you have it memorized, huh? Baruch atah aranai Elohinu melech haolam Um The best part oh of waking <laughs> up Is not dying in your sleep Make sure the talus doesn't fall off. It's hanging off the side. Ow. I mean, just a couple of versions, you know? <laughs> so, um, hey, this is what everybody does when they put a puppet on. They go, so, uh, hey, uh, the other day, have you ever made him like an old Jersey guy? Mm -mm -mm. So, look, um, I used to be a garbage man. <laughs> I know, right? And uh, every morning, right, I'd get up, go to uh, go brush my teeth, get a donut, Call my friend Janine, wink, wink, and then uh, hop in the truck and <laughs> go pick up all of my stuff from her place. Dad, well, this is, well, I'm not keeping any of this in. Don't, what don't. are you doing? I don't know, dude. I'm running out of steam. <laughs> <laughs> the cameras are off, too. Yeah, edit this all out. Oh, boy. All right. Well, oh, man. It's been great. Yeah, it's been great. Thanks for I, I need to take a nap. Yeah, me too. <laughs> yeah, uh, I need to take a dab. <laughs> <laughs> so before we get out of here, <sighs> okay, two, three. If if someone doesn't say two, three, yeah. and and hold for four without saying four, I know they're not a real singer. Two, three. Amazing grace, how sweet. The sound that falls on God for thee oh, at once was lost, but now am found together. Was, was blind, blind, but now, now I see. Thank you so much for tuning in to Take Your Shoes Off podcast. My name is Rick Glassman with special guest Adam Ray. Check out next week when our guest will be Adam Ray again when we try this <laughs> a better time. My name is Rick signing Shoot. off. Have a good one. Cut. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>